Perkle Jones was a photographer drawn to transitions. From a disappearing river valley, to a town crumbling under the weight of modernization, to the emergence of a militant identity among African Americans in the 1960s, his photographs were as much about the landscape of history, time's inexorable march, as they were about the people who lived through it. Jones died on March 15th at the age of 95, after a seven-decade career that produced three classic bodies of work and fused two great traditions of documentary photography. In photographing the American West, Perkle simultaneously represented the boundless potential of the American spirit and the challenges to the American promise, rural poverty, environmental degradation, and racial injustice. Among the dusty edges and furrowed brows depicted in Jones's photographs, the question seems to linger. Does that promise actually exist? After Jones served in the Army during the Second World War, he moved to the West Coast and studied at the California Institute of Fine Arts under Ansel Adams. Adams was Perkle Jones's first mentor and an early champion of his work. I think that Perkle Jones is an artist in the best sense of the term, Adams once said. His pictures will live with you and with the world. In collaboration with Farm Security Administration photographer Dorothea Lang, a fellow student of Adams, Jones documented the Berryessa Valley in Napa County, a fertile, grape-producing area just south of the San Francisco Bay that would be flooded after the completion of the Monticello Dam in 1957. The photographs captured the lives of the residents of Monticello, population 250. The images speak to the stolid perseverance of the populace and the expansive beauty of the landscape. The dam represented progress, of course, but it also killed a town and an ecosystem. The California School of Fine Arts was a hub of photographic activity after the war. There, Jones met and married Ruth Marion Baruch, a fellow student. His second notable body of work, Walnut Grove, was a collaboration with her. Walnut Grove, a series from 1961, documented a small farming community on the Sacramento River that was withering in the face of modernization. From closed bait shops to workers waiting for day labor, Jones represented the looming shadows of the town's demise in poetic understatement. Sly, stylistic flourishes emerged as well, like an image of a growth of wildflowers near a shantytown, or a picture of an ornate pagoda. Style and politics were intertwined in Jones's photography. I am not concerned about style for style's sake, he said, adding, style is as natural as breathing. Perhaps Jones's best-known series of photographs were taken in the Bay Area during the Black Panther Party's height of activity in 1968. In collaboration with his wife again, Jones documented the rise of militant black identity through demonstrations, rallies, and social actions. The portraits are stirring and filled with a dual sense of pride and trepidation. But truly the project's merits rest on being present, seeing the rise of a new kind of black identity during a turbulent period in American history. As a documentarian, these periods of change, whether environmental or social, constituted Jones's subject matter and method of making political statements. To Jones, the moment we make a picture, we become political. Jones taught at the California School, now known as the San Francisco Art Institute, for 28 years, and was the last surviving pupil of Ansel Adams. <laughs>